This is Tabletop Deathmatch, a competition to find the next great tabletop game. It was entertaining. I don't think I would buy this game. Everything sort of flowed logically. Game designers from all over the country sent their prototypes to us at Cards Against Humanity. We picked eight finalists, and now we're bringing them to Gen Con, the biggest tabletop gaming convention in the world, where they're going to pitch their prototypes to our panel of industry-leading judges. One game will win a first printing paid for by Cards Against Humanity and be crowned the winner of Tabletop Deathmatch. Tabletop Deathmatch is a tabletop gaming contest and web series that we hold to basically encourage indie gamers to help develop their games and help other people uh, work on game design and just see into the industry a little bit. You looked at this trend. Mm -hmm. How is this not signing up to the multiverse? Let me take a look. I forgot about this game. I might be exactly why I really liked this Ooh. game. <laughs> it's just, clear does the world need a game that's almost exactly the same as Sentinels of the Multiverse? I want another Sentinels of the Multiverse. <laughs> so many people told me that this contest was their inspiration for finishing their half-finished project. Players become writers on the hottest show on TV, <laughs> desperately trying to make gold out of the network's terrible notes. <laughs> I, I really love that. Me too. Habit. It's always really exciting to make a physical thing that people will be able to have around forever and play with and have fun with. So uh, this game is actually a game that I remember cutting from Tabletop Deathmatch last year. And uh, it's called Bad Detectives, and it's a strategic storytelling game where players cooperate to solve a murder using only their vast knowledge of TV crime shows. So you're like this woefully unprepared detective. And I, I really, I, I dig it. And I, and I saw some attachments and I saw some of like the game pieces and it it's just seems like it's much better put together this time. And uh, I just, I really like the idea. I'm into it. Oh, my name is Zach Barton. I'm a engineer. Uh, I've been living in Chicago for about four years. Um, before that, I grew up in uh, Northern California. Designing games is kind of a new hobby for me. I've been playing games for almost as long as I can remember. You know, games like Monopoly, games like uh, Scrabble. It wasn't until maybe fourth or fifth grade one of my friends introduced me to some Dungeons and Dragons knockoff. I was enthralled. I didn't know that you could have a game where one player was controlling the bad guys and one player was controlling the good guys. And I was blown away. Bad Detectives has always been about uh, building a story with your friends to try and solve a murder, but the catch is that none of you are actually any good about solving murders. So the game is about combining these elements of tropes from popular crime shows in order to build a successful case. Whimsical storytelling has always been the key focus of the game. However, the mechanics have been clunky at times. So every design iteration has been based on feedback to try and make the gameplay more intuitive. One of the big things I changed based on some of your feedback was to just make the cards a little more consistent. On the federal agent in the second email, I put the colored icon in the upper left and the yellow sticky notes in the lower left. And I felt like that was a better flow of information because that colored icon in the corner, the upper corner is more important. Yeah, and as I said, like with iconography, like having a consistent line weight and maybe like consistent elements that carry over from each icon can I think like in a minimal way it can kind of like affect the cohesiveness of how it works and plays. Do you think there's anything else looking at the final versions of the cards? Is there anything else I might want to revisit before I send these files to the printer? Yeah, I think it looks pretty good and I'm actually kind of excited to see the rest of the set other than the three you're just showing me. Bad Detectives was influenced by a lot of games that I like to play on my own. Probably the biggest influence was Carcassonne. It's one of my favorite games. You put tiles next to each other. It's the same you know, physical mechanics. Instead of building a kingdom, you're building a story. Carcassonne has a lot of collaborative elements together. You work with other players to finish a bigger castle or make a larger road. In Bad Detectives, you're doing the same thing. You could get a stronger piece of evidence um, on the board if you work off of the details provided by another player. The beauty of Bad Detectives is that you can play it as a storytelling game with other people who want to tell a story, but if one of the players is interested in scoring the most points, 
it doesn't ruin the storyteller player's experience because everyone is working together to make this story happen. When I was designing Bad Detectives, uh, a big challenge was the number of cards that went into every prototype. Um, right now there's 396 cards total and that's pared down from where I started. And it's because every card has an element of a story on it and you want to make sure that if you're going to play this game multiple times, you have different elements of the story showing up, otherwise it's going to get repetitive and maybe uh, not be as fun the third or fourth time around. So even coming up with the first or second playtest sets, it took a long time to just get all of those cards made. Hey Maki, how's it going? Hey, good. Yourself? Uh, doing good. Doing real good. I got a chance to look at some of the new cards. I haven't gone through all of them yet. The contractor looks amazing, by the way. Awesome, thanks. Um, How'd you like that? Well, your execution of it looks amazing. He, and you can tell that you know some of the backgrounds are reused, but it's you know good to actually tie some of the similar themes together. Like you would expect cool. that construction site and the contractor to go together, so it makes sense to have that repeated visual element in the background. In, in general, like you have a really clear vision as to what you want and what you want the art to look like. So it's been a really, really easy. <laughs> I, I can't wait to see what all of this looks like when it comes together. Getting the prototype together in the time frame that I have has been pretty stressful. Um, the problem is there's 144 pieces and there's really no way we were gonna be able to get that done in time. Uh, Maki and I decided to have some placeholder images done in the same style. That way we had maybe six or seven cards of each type done, finished, complete, that you could show the judges and say, look, in, in a final game, with all the resources available, that's what this would look like. I've done a test print of some of the cards to make sure that the font is big enough and it's legible, and the cards look great. I'm really excited to have a, a complete set put together and show it off at Gen Con. Um, I'm also excited to get more than four hours of sleep a night. So it's kind of this balance. All right, uh, my name is Zach Barton, and this is my game, Bad Detectives. Bad Detectives is a strategic storytelling game the problem is, is that none of us are good at our jobs at all. We are all the worst detectives. To start Bad Detectives, players place a victim card in the center of the table. During each turn, players use element cards and detail cards to try and solve the case. Element cards are broken into three categories, persons, locations, and weapons. These provide the who, where, and how of the case. Detail cards provide the why of the case. There are two types of detail cards, notes that contain descriptions of a single element and relationships that explain how two different elements are connected. Players create lines of inquiry that lead to the victim with their element cards and detail cards. Lines of inquiry must lead a person, crime scene, and weapon to the victim card in order for the case to be solved. All cards, whether they be victim cards, element cards, or detail cards, also contain two themes. Players don't have to connect cards with matching themes, but stringing together themes increases a player's score. Players score two points for every element they play, one point for every detail they play, an additional point for every theme they match in a line of inquiry. Potential points are tracked via a player's color-coded evidence markers. Once a player connects enough lines of inquiry, so a case has a location, a person, and a weapon, they receive the detective badge. After that, each other player has one more turn to add more details to the case or to replace an entire element with a new element that connects to the victim through a shorter, more concise line of inquiry. If nobody can modify the case, it moves to trial, the scoring phase. Each player counts their evidence markers and tallies their score. The player holding the badge gets an additional three points. The game ends after three cases have been solved and the player with the most points is declared the best bad detective. I really like the theme. It, I like storytelling games, and there's a lot of potential there for that. So now we've got our hand of cards. We go to the cold open, the beginning of our procedural crime drama. Here's our victim, a pawnbroker, found dead. And it's up to us to provide some reasonable approximation of justice. 
I guess we're really gonna cash in on this crime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really like the art style of the game, uh, the, the chalk drawings of the, the deceased, the, the murder victims were so creative and fun. It, it's, it's terrific. It really draws you into the play. So let's put that there, this there. Perfect. So mm, took a shortcut to make the connection, which is fine. You can do that. Um, so then you have now connected a weapon to the location and then you would go ahead and move to the scoring phase. Bad Detectives has a mechanic where you domino together the, the clues and the locations, and that was really clever. I really enjoyed that part. Our murderer kept a uh, empty syringe. He has a uh, collection of used drug paraphernalia in a nice big display case in this uh, casino he likes to visit. There you go. Two thirds of the way to our case. Max has three, see if it's open a shop. Yeah, yeah. So probably my favorite part of Bad Detectives was uh, the storytelling where, you know, after we put down the tiles, we got to tell how the case was, we got to make some jokes, and that made it fun. So now, feel free to uh, explain what we've come up with so far. So this instructor was sitting outside a car, or inside a car, right outside of the casino, which just happened to have the weapons inside in their uh, syringe, weird syringe case. It's open and shut case, guys. This is it. He, it is. he did it. Well, you put the final piece together, so you get the badge. And now we've got a complete case. In this case, this is still worth three. Uh, this path would be worth five points. Total. Yeah, no, 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 makes sense. All right. Some of the scoring elements were a little too complicated. I think maybe taking some of that stuff out will help make it for a cleaner game. All right, well, let me just uh, tell you guys why your case is wrong. You're bad detective, and I <laughs> thought that was self-explanatory. What makes you think you're better than us? That's a great question. I will stall for time <laughs> while I determine why your case is terrible. I think that the judges will really like the theme of the game and see potential in development, but I think that they will be concerned with the fact that there's a lot of analysis paralysis with drawing cards at the beginning of your turn and having to make a decision right on the spot. So you're saying that the pawnbroker witnessed somebody stashing a shuffle and that's why he was killed? Uh, Sounds possible. Because this is so important to the case, this casino uh -huh. is known for its party scene. Oh well, now it all makes sense. <laughs> I think the judges will pick up on the fact that it is hard to figure out exactly where you can place. And we discussed during the game how you can put the icons on the sides of the cards to make that clearer. This example, you've got the person line, you've got the location line. If you had a weapon line as well, all these, this is, always has to be a person, this always has to be a location. There's going to so, be no room for it. Third. And what I notice is that is causing a lot of confusion. And one of the ways you could solve that is by putting the blue icon on both opposite sides of the card and putting the green icon on both opposite sides of this card yeah, and then you so can that change you the can orientation. match it up and you and can just you... rotate it in and you just have to match up the symbols like dominoes. That's very That's actually a pretty good idea. That's great. <laughs> and yeah, I actually... Hey, you're a bad detective. It's definitely <laughs> <a> good ideas. <laughs> so what I wanted to do was make long chains of interesting story bits and the rules incentivize doing the opposite of that, making short chains. Now, what is the benefit to me making a longer line if I'm not if I'm making myself further away? It's a way. risk versus reward thing. If you have a lot of cards that have matching symbols, that's great because you can play those cards together. You're going to get a point for every pair of matches, and it's going to be harder for someone to kind of jump in there because they're going to have to provide an equal number of matches to what you've provided. You're opening yourself up, though. That if at any point someone does have that uh, way to break in or a shorter line, they risk, you risk cutting all those points out. I think the judges are going to say that the game has a lot of promise and maybe just needs a few more tweaks to get it all the way home. As the best detective, the bad best detective, we, you have put the final pin in this case. Everyone has agreed with you. P please describe. We were in this casino, which is known for its parties, obviously. It's pawnbroker for no particular reason had private access to it. Maybe uh, gosh, he supplied no the shovels for the shovel party. Oh right, it was a shovel casino. They were gambling. <laughs> they were just digging themselves into debt. But they stole the shovel. And I know this makes no sense at all. But uh, his shoveling instructor was sitting in the park car outside the casino, and uh, 
I mean, the case is so closed that it, it couldn't be possible that it be. I get a little confused about some of the, the scoring mechanics and, and how pieces went together. I think it's a great game, but I think maybe he needs to remove some elements from the game to make it simpler, cleaner play. I, I think the judges will think it's a great concept that needs uh, a decent amount of work to bring it to completion. The shifty guy outside of the casino did it. <laughs> Let's arrest him. The case, the shifty right. shovel instructor. <laughs> so that is a round of bad detectives. That change from poker size cards to square size cards came up after uh, a play test. A play test where I had just finished making a set of 400 rectangular cards. And then I find out, maybe these need to be cut down in size. Why are there over 300 cards in this game? Um, visual design needs work. That's the kind of game that I would like. As long as there's a way to demo it effectively, it could be a really popular game. Mm -hmm.